welcome to academic game tutorials in this video we will learn about the vapor compression refrigeration system along with its different parts and functions so let's get into the topic we know that refrigeration is the process of lowering the temperature by removing unwanted heat from a selected object substance or an enclosed space and transferring this heat to another object substance or space now from the name vapor compression refrigeration system, we can understand that in this process we will compress a vapor refrigerant inside the system to obtain the refrigeration or cooling. If we are going to compress vapor in this system of refrigeration, then obviously we will need a compressor for this job. So, the process of compressing the vapor refrigerant inside the system using a compressor to obtain the refrigeration or cooling is called vapor compression refrigeration system. Now, Let's look into the major parts and components, and basic working procedure of the vapor compression refrigeration system. So, here we have a compressor, after that there is a condenser, then there is an expansion valve or throttle valve or we can simply call it a valve, and finally, there is an evaporator. So these four major components together construct the vapor compression refrigeration system. All these components are connected together using these connecting pipes, thus a closed loop system is formed, and the refrigerant for this vapor compression refrigeration system will flow through all these components and pipes in the system. Now, let's see how these components work. Throughout the whole process, our main purpose will be to ensure that continuously cooling effect or refrigeration effect is obtained in this evaporator. We all know that this evaporator is the component where the refrigeration or cooling actually takes place. This evaporator is placed on the region where we need cooling, and then the evaporator absorbs all the heat of that region and passes those heat to the cold refrigerant passing through the evaporator coils, thus the surrounding environment cools down. So, let's see how this process works. First of all, this compressor starts working. The job of the compressor is to pressurize or compress the vapor refrigerant inside this compressor chamber. Here, in vapor compression refrigeration system we commonly use either ammonia or freon as a heat carrying medium throughout the whole procedure. Now, we know that if pressure increases, it also increases the temperature. So, when this vapor refrigerant is compressed inside the compressor chamber by squeezing the vapor very tightly together, it will heat up. After that, this high pressure and high temperature vapor refrigerant will leave the compressor and will enter into the condenser through this connected pipe. Here, we have a condenser. When high temperature high pressure vapor refrigerant enters this cold condenser, then the condenser absorbs the heat from the vapor refrigerant and completely converts it into liquid. This condenser can be water cooled, air cooled, or cooled by any other substance from an external source which will liberate the latent heat of this vapor coming into the condenser, and thus condensing keeps happening. So, in easier words, condenser changes the incoming high temperature high pressure vapor refrigerant into liquid state by changing its phase. Here we had vapor coming in, and now we have liquid refrigerant going out, so the phase is changed. Now this high pressure high temperature liquid refrigerant will leave the condenser, and pass through this expansion valve or throttle valve using this connected pipe. Now, this high pressure liquid refrigerant coming from the condenser will be expanded inside this expansion valve. We know that when expansion occurs, the pressure between the molecules decreases considerably, thus the temperature falls. So, this high pressure liquid refrigerant will be expanded into low pressure, low temperature liquid refrigerant. In practical use, at this point we do not get only liquid refrigerant, but here we actually obtain a mixture of low pressure, low temperature liquid and vapor refrigerant. Thus, here we get a mixture of very cold, chilled, low temperature liquid and vapor refrigerant coming out of the expansion valve. Then, this liquid and vapor mixed refrigerant will be passed over to the evaporator. We all know that, the main cooling effect or refrigeration effect always occurs in the evaporator. So, when this low pressure, very cold, chilled, low temperature liquid refrigerant will enter the evaporator coils, it will absorb all the heat present in the surface of the evaporator coils. 
by absorbing all the heat from the surrounding region of the evaporator coils, this cold chill liquid refrigerant will completely turn into low pressure vapor refrigerant inside these coils, and the surrounding region of the evaporator will become cold by losing the heat to this liquid. Thus the cooling effect or refrigeration effect has occurred in the evaporator. After that, this low pressure vapor refrigerant will leave the evaporator, and enter into this compressor through this connected pipe. Now, this low pressure vapor refrigerant coming to the condenser will be again compressed inside the compressor chamber unconverted to high pressure high temperature vapor, then again this high pressure high temperature vapor will be passed to this condenser where it will change phase and will be converted to liquid, then it is passed to the expansion valve, the evaporator and again to the compressor, so the cycle keeps repeating over and over again and refrigeration or cooling is obtained continuously in the evaporator region throughout the whole process. So, this is how vapor compression refrigeration system works. Thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful, subscribe to my channel Academic Game Tutorials for more updated videos.